Hey guys, Greg here and welcome back to my channel. Uh, so a few days ago, a guy I've been teaching, um, he, he got in touch and said he'd change his strings. He's having a few problems putting his strings on. He got most of them on, but a couple of them pinged off and stuff. And so he said, could he come over and I'd have a look at it for him. And we sorted it out. And I remember how much I used to struggle putting strings on when I hadn't done it much. So I needed to, <laughs> Let get me words out. I needed to change the strings on this one. And uh, I thought it might be good to have a video. So if anyone else is kind of in the same, you know, maybe having the same problems with the guitar, changing the strings and stuff, it might be handy to see this one. Uh, the guitar I'm changing them on today is a Martin Booth. Uh, it's a Martin Booth signature. Uh, Martin's a, a great luthier from Suffolk in the UK, and uh, my dad's involved with the company. They've made guitars for some really amazing players, such as like John Etheridge, John Wheatcroft, and uh, Graham Coxon, who used to play with Blur. I think he still plays with Blur and he does his own stuff, and I think he plays with the Gorillas as well now. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Um, when you change the strings on your guitar, um, putting them on the, this end is usually quite similar, um, the machine heads and stuff, but the bridge can make it a bit different. If you've got like a, a Les Paul style guitar, then you'll have like a, a stop tail piece that comes off. And you've got to be quite careful that the screws don't move because that'll adjust the setup of the guitar. Um, if you've got a strap, it's going to be a similar sort of thing as this. Um, this is like a trim or a tremolo, they call it. You've usually got like an arm that goes in here that you might have seen it on your guitar if you've got one, I'm sure you have. And you've got like, the strings will go in the back in here and then we'll feed them through there and pull them out the top, which we'll see in a minute. Um, or if you've got an acoustic, um, you'll have like bridge pins that come out and you'll need to put your string in and then put the pin back in and that holds the string in place. And then you've got like, uh, you might have a Floyd Rose, you probably haven't if you just started playing because it's, it's kind of a complicated sort of bridge that you're probably better off having something like that when you've been playing a little while. Um, and what you need to do with that is cut the ball ends off. You've got like little ball ends that you might have seen on the, that keep the string in place. And you feed them in and then you do the saddle up and it holds it in place. And then you've got like a locking nut on here, but um, probably do another video on that if anyone needs information about that one because it is quite complicated. Um, so yeah, let's do this. So you're going to need some strings. Today I'm using a set of 10s, Ernie Ball Slinkies, as you can probably see. Um, if you just started out, it's best off to have 9s. I imagine your guitars probably come with 9s on it. 9s aren't quite so thick, they're a bit easier to play. Um, and once your fingers get a bit stronger, then you can kind of maybe change up to 10s if you want to. They are a bit trickier to play, but um, you get a nice tone out of them. So yeah, I mean, just use whatever gauge you want, really. And then we're going to need some wire cutters. We'll see what we're going to do with them in a minute. I'm sure you can work it out anyway. A string winder, um, some 4 0 wire wool. So, this is really fine stuff. Uh, this stuff's optional. I mean, that's optional as well, the wire wool, but it's nice to clean your strings up or clean your fretboard up rather. Uh, some people use lem oil, but this is uh, Dr. Duck's Axe Wax and String Lube, which cleans up your or makes your neck all nice again. And then a duster as well. So, they're the things we're going to need. Uh, so what I do to start with is I loosen the strings off. Um, this guitar has actually got locking machine heads. So what you do is you feed the string in and then just do it up at the back. So that means that the, the strings don't have too many winds on them. Yeah, so this guitar's got locking, they're called locking spurtzels, uh, or the spurtzels the company, but they're locking machine heads, and you just undo them, and then you can take the string off. It just saves a bit of time. Not all guitars have got them, but most of them don't have them, but um, it is quite handy to have. Can change the strings on this for a little while so they go a little bit tricky to get out at the moment. But that one's come out. Because I haven't done any gigs for so long, like I haven't really changed. I mean, it's good for recording to change your strings. Uh, sometimes people do say to me, um, How often should I change my strings? And uh, it's kind of hard to say, if you're playing gigs and stuff, you, 
you don't really want your strings to break halfway for a song. Although, you know, you can you take a spare guitar. Um, but it can get quite expensive if you're changing your strings all the time. So usually I'd, I'd probably change my strings every five or six gigs. Um, yeah, but if you're recording, you want to have fresh strings, you know, every time you record. So, but if you're not doing either of those, then it's just kind of whenever you want to, really. If, you, if your hands sweat quite a bit, it might be worth changing them more regularly because you, um, yeah, the e strings might go rusty and stuff. But you can get like nano webs and things like that. And uh, what are the other ones? Uh, paradigms, any ball paradigms, which they seem to be quite popular. And they're meant to last for quite a bit longer, but they are more expensive. So, I mean, it's kind of up to you, really. So, yeah, the first thing we want to do once we've taken the strings off is just clean the guitar up with a duster. Sometimes there's well, there's bits you can get to on your guitar which you can't get to when the strings are on. We'll just give it a good old dust. <laughs> it's worth um, coiling your strings up as well. If you cut bits off, which sometimes you have to if you've got curly bits and that, just to get it through, you know, because you can't get the bits through the bridge. Um, you just want to make sure you've got all the bits because if you get strings in your foot or somewhere it can be quite painful but just make sure you've got all the bits just so once we've given it a clean we're then going to wire wall the fretboard um, Because the wire wall is magnetic, or the, the pickups are magnetic, but the filings that come off the, the wire wall stick to your um, pickups, it's worth just covering them over like that with maybe a string case or a bit of cardboard or anything that you've got, just to stop it going on there. Not the end of the world if it does go on there, but. So we're just gonna go across the fretboard. This gets all the dirt and dead skin and stuff off and it also makes the frets nice and shiny because they do get dull we just rub across there as I said this one isn't dirty really so I'm just showing you kind of what I do but we're still making the frets look nice and shiny good you can usually get a few uses out of a piece of wire well I've actually used this bit before but it looks like it's probably the last time I can use it so I'll put that in the bin and then we're gonna just get our duster and just dust off the little bits and it's worth just um, getting those bits maybe shaking it outside so that you haven't got little bits of filings on your on your body because that might scratch the finish, which you don't want. And then we're gonna use some of our lem oil or our Dr. Ducks. You literally only need like a couple of drops of this stuff. Oh, might be a little bit too much. And then we're just gonna rub that across the fretboard. Actually, I should have shown you, shouldn't I? If you can see this end, how it looks, and then how it's looking this end just kind of makes it fresh again, makes it nice. It is completely optional. It's nice to kind of clean it up and make your guitar nice again. And then maybe use a dry piece of cloth just to clean it up again. So that's it, so we're looking pretty good. Ready to put the first string on. So I start with the thick E string. I think most people do, but then I'm not entirely sure. We're just gonna poke it in the hole here in the back and it'll come out the top. And then cause I've got locking machine heads, I just poke it through here and have the, 
with the hole in line with you like this. But if um, you haven't got locking machine heads, just go around the back of the machine head like that. And then come in about that much, actually a little bit more, maybe about that much. And keep the tension held down and then wind your string on. So with this one, literally, I'm just going to do this up at the back. And then, so you're going to do this with yours. If you haven't got locking machine heads, just keep the string up like that. Keep the tension on and then just wind it on. Until you get somewhere, it doesn't have to be in tune, but just somewhere roughly in tune. So that's our E string, then we've got our A string. We're going to put in the same way, but in the next hole. Probably my eyesight, but sometimes I can't actually see where the hole is. So you have to kind of hold it up to the light and just keep turning it. Oh, there it is. I'm just going to do this one up. The same way. Martin, he actually does uh, a lot of setups and repairs for people and uh, he did one of my guitars recently and I was just as I was leaving the next person to turn up was like oh, crazy, was um, 80s pop legend Nick Kershaw so that was really cool to see him um, he doesn't live far from Martin I don't think so So when you do the strings on the bottom of the guitar, we're then going to turn the machine heads the other way. So for the ones on the top, we're going to turn them anti-clockwise, and then when we're on the bottom, we're going to turn them clockwise. But it's all going to be the same, so we're still going to keep the tension as we turn it. This is our B string. So now we've got all our strings on, the next thing we need to do is tune the guitar. So as you can see, I'm using a rack mounted tuner, but any sort of tuner is fine. Um, use like one that you can clip on your headstock or there's some really great phone apps or, or there's ones that you just plug into that are really cool too. Um, so what we're gonna do first is just get our guitar in tune. So make sure your volume's turned up. It may be well out of tune. So you've just gotta find where you need to go with it. You need to get used to kind of how the strings sound because I think if you're miles out of tune, it can be tricky to know kind of how to get it anywhere near in tune. So just try and get used to it, getting your ears to know how the strings sound in tune. So then you can kind of get it near. It's, it does take a little while just to get your ears tuned in, but once you get there, it makes it a lot easier. And once your guitar is in tune, it shouldn't go out of tune too much anyway. You might just want to check it every time you play. It always sounds better in tune. <laughs> so as you can see, it's going flat each time. It does take a little while for the strings to get used to where they need to be. And some of them seem to stay in tune better than others sometimes. I 
And then once it's roughly in tune, what we're going to do is stretch the strings in. So if you get your finger underneath the string and get a place where you can really stretch it and pull it up, obviously not too hard, you don't want to break them, but just be gentle with it, but just stretch it so that it goes a bit flat. And some strings on some guitars will go really flat. And others like this one hasn't really gone flat really, it's staying in pitch. So let's try the B. And you want to do this before you cut the strings off the end. So let's see if it's working alright. This one's gone a little bit flat. This one's not staying in tune quite so well. So we're getting there with this. I'm now on A, so A's gone a little bit flat. This is quite time consuming, it can take quite a while to do, but it's definitely worth it because there's nothing worse than a out of tune guitar. <laughs> If your guitar's out of tune then it just kind of and you you know you're not used to playing it's just going to make everything worse cuz at least you want your guitar to stay in tune it kind of gives you a bit of a head start if it's in tune So I think we're there then once we've done all the strings it is worth just checking them all again. Just making sure they're pretty much there. Because on some guitars, the tension, if you've got like a trem, the tension will be affected by the other strings. So if you break a string, then it will make the other strings go out of tune and stuff. Especially with like a, a Floyd Rose or something. So that's it. So after all that, we're then going to cut the ends off the, the strings off the end. Some people you may have seen don't do this. And uh, I personally just think it looks a little bit messy, but it's, it's up to you. It is worth cutting them off though, because it can poke someone's eye out and obviously you don't want that. But if you haven't got wire cutters, you can get a coin. And if you rub it along there like that a few times, especially with the um, thinner strings, they'll curl up. So um, if you haven't got any wire cutters with you and you're maybe at a gig or something, then um, rather than poking the bass player's eye out or something, just curl them up and that'll keep them safe. That's it, so that's how I change my strings. I hope you found that useful, guys, and uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll, uh, I'll see you again soon.